So one way to play the semiconductor market is to invest in the, let's say the chip designers like AMD, Nvidia and Intel. The other way is to, let's say, invest in the memory manufacturers like SK Hynix or uh, Samsung or Micron. One other way is to look at the fabs like TSMC or Intel or global foundries. But one of the best ways right now, in my opinion, given the right price, is actually to look at ASML, which is a tool manufacturer which enables, uh, for example, TSMC to produce the more finer chips. You know, once you go below 7, 5 nanometer, you really need these EUV chips. Although you technically can manufacture, I believe, down to 5 nanometers uh, with the, the DUV process as well, the older machines that also Canon uh, as well uh, as Nikon is selling right now. But I think, um, yeah, if 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 it's if the process is gonna be financially vi viable, you need to have these EUV machines. And right now, the only manufacturer on the planet that can can do this is ASML, the Dutch company. Market cap of 420 billion, and quite richly valued right now at 55 price to earnings ratio. Although you can see that just uh, essentially six months ago it was P ratio of you know let's say 25 to 30 because the price was half of what it is today so it's been going up quite a bit since then since you know october last year but i think this is still an interesting company due to the simple fact that they are the only manufacturer on the planet that is capable of, of manufacturing the euv machines and the euv machines is really important you can see that um, from their sales for example q1 of 2021 Roughly 49% or 54% depending on quarter is coming from the EUV machines. The rest is from the EUV. And then you can see the same scenario roughly, give or take, you know, 40 to 50% on a given quarter coming from the EUV sales. The rest is from the older machines that also Canon and Nikon are selling. And before we look at the data and the numbers uh, and, you know, project our future sale numbers, let's have a look and see what companies are using these? Well, you can see that Intel is gonna be the first company that uh, gonna acquire the most advanced EUV machine that ASML has manufactured to date. This is the high NA EUV. I'll explain shortly roughly what it is compared to the previous first generation EUV, which entered the market roughly in 2015, roughly 10 years ago. But previous to Intel, you could see that Taiwan Semiconductor has been the the one com company that I think has purchased somewhere around 45 to 60% of all of ASML's uh, EUV machines throughout the years, if you start from the beginning in 2015, 2016. And it's because uh, TSMC has been the leading manufacturer in terms of uh, uh, semiconductor for chips for basically everyone. For like you could have Qualcomm, TSA, sorry, Qualcomm, Nvidia. AMD, even Intel these days. And you can see that at, as time goes on, uh, the, the need for the more difficult manufacturing nodes, like, you know, the two nanometer and three nanometer starts to increase and the seven nanometer process starts to become less important. You can also see that in, in TSMC's own uh, projections and the earnings report that uh, five nanometer as of last quarter was 37%. Uh, percent seven nanometer was 19 percent but if you look at these numbers for let's say two three years ago seven nanometer would be the dominating one and if you go back let's say to 2016 uh, you know around the time of iphone 6 iphone 6 6 and iphone 7 then the 16 nanometer was the dominating as time goes on obviously we need the finer details so that's where you know they keep continue to go to these finer details with you know seven and five nanometer and recently with the three nanometer generation and i think next year tsmc introduces their two nanometer process but you know everything after seven nanometer essentially you need the isml machines any of one of these machines now this one is the second generation but you know the first one as well as very very important because no one else on the planet can manufacture these ASML is uh, aware of the demand for these chips, uh, uh, for these chip manufacturing machines. So they have said that they're going to increase their uh, production capacity to 20 units annually by 2028. Now, to be honest, it doesn't sound a whole lot, but you have to understand that these machines from from uh, ASML cost around, you know, 
350 to 400 million US dollar each. The second generation ones. The first generation ones are a bit cheaper at around 150 to 220 million US dollar. But still, you know, like, so five machines could cost anywhere from 1 billion to 2 billion. So it's it's not, a, you know, like, so the number 20 is small, but, you know, these these machines are the size of a three-story building. But in the midst of all this extremely, you know, cutting at technology, you have to never forget that essentially half of their revenue is coming from the old gen, older generation DUV machines. And, yeah, they, they are going to be needed for all the all the manufacturing of the semiconductors that are not on the leading edge so you can see here that three nanometer five nanometer i would look at them like a leading edge and even seven nanometer right now but probably in a couple of years seven nanometer will be kind of a legacy node in a sense but yeah you know anything after seven nanometer is like kind of old and they don't really need the euv machines for those kind of processes uh, so and you can see that that pie, that part of the chart is uh, essentially like forty percent of the entire sales of TSMC. So you could see that TSMC is uh, selling forty percent of their chips roughly for the for the chips that are not necessarily in need of EUV machines. But also that's not bad for SML because they are actually selling the majority of the machines they sell are the DUV machines. But with the simple fact that you know. Look at this for, for example for last year. They sold 42 EUV machines, 396 DUVs. But the interesting part here is that the EUV revenue was at roughly 10 billion and the DUV was at 13.3 billion. So you know despite selling 10 times more in the number of the machines, the average selling price of those DUV machines are not close to you know the, the EUV. And that's because they have competition in the DUV market from Canon and Nikon. But on the you know extreme ultra violet light uh, so EUV machines they're the only company on the planet as far as I know uh, I think this is the only high tech company that seems to have a monopoly uh, monopoly on the market in their position so now before we look into the more details I shown you that you know there's definitely a need and just before we look at the numbers and the projections for the future sales I have also mentioned that you know the need of as time goes on more and more of these pie chart not only from tsmc obviously from intel because i now i took the leading edge uh, the biggest uh, fab out there which is taiwan semiconductor but i do believe that intel is uh, getting to a good place in the coming years and all essentially every single manufacturer is going to be in need of the euv machines at some point in the near future because as we go down this pie chart you know and we go to the two nanometer and one nanometer and then let's say you know the eight angstroms and so on we definitely gonna need the euv machines so the more time goes on the more part of the pie chart is gonna be in need of those machines so let's look at the machines so we can see that you know the the first three here i just listed there's a couple of one of them more from the first generation but i just picked three of them and the cost of you can see the cost here the limitations roughly you know how, how fine are the detail they can manufacture and then actually one of the most important factor is the wafer output per hour and these are rough estimates i've taken from their web page and some research on other websites but yeah you can see that with each generation they kind of improve the output in terms of number of wafer manufactured per hour and then the important question is then you know what is the output per, per per let's say per month so you can see if you if you buy one of these machines for 175 to 200 million you're gonna be able to process around 72,000 wafers per month and how much is that well think about it this way that think about it in terms of that uh, TSMC right now is the biggest uh, fab on the planet and they're and, uh, and oh, sorry, their monthly consumption is roughly 3 million wafers per month. So one of these machines is going to kind of take care of 72,000 wafers per month. Now, obviously, all of these 3 million wafers are, as we said, not going to, you know, the EUV nodes. A lot of them are going to go, like 50% is going to go to nodes that are not in need of EUV. So it doesn't say that, you know, every single fab that TSMC has needs to have one of these machines or two or three. It depends. But 
but there, there's another catch to it because for example look at it only one of their fabs fab 18 consumes 120 wafers per month on 5 nanometer and the 5 nanometer process on tsmc i think it depends because they have multiple versions of 5 nanometer but it's it's not usually only one layer of euv usually it's like you know maybe four five or ten or twenty layers of euv i think i wrote in a comment here that according to one source they say that their tsmc n3 one of the variants of the three nanometer process uses up to 25 layers of euv this means that you know you're if you go from one layer to 25 layers you're cutting your productivity by 25 times if i understand this correctly so now instead of you doing 72,000 wafers if you're gonna need this cutting edge 5 and 3 nanometer process from tsmc either you're gonna buy 25 of these machines to 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 continue to 72,000 wafers per month or you're gonna you know maybe use one machine but then you're gonna cut your output and production rate by 25 times so yeah so that's why it's uh, you know it's very important that to understand that I think the need of these machines is going to be endless as we go onwards in the future. So I think they're going to be uh, in a good position to hold their margins and maybe in a sense, you know, increase their average, average selling price as we go onwards because there's no apparent competitor out there and it's not like someone is going to be, it's not like Nvidia, you know, where they sell their chips and you can see there's competition coming in terms of AMD and Intel, but there's essentially no one else on the planet that can do this right now. Things could change maybe in five, ten years, but in the closest two to three years, I don't think anything at all is going to change. So, so that's that. There's that, um, and we can see that the difference between the first generation and the second generation EXE machines is that they're gonna use a uh, more different, more finer light source, EUV source, and that's gonna give you you know ability to process these semiconductors even finer so now you're gonna have a limit at you know now previously you had a limit around two two to three nanometers now you're gonna have a limit around 0 0.7 to let's say one nanometer somewhere thereabouts um, but the cost of the machines definitely has to go up because the some of the mechanics in there and the tolerances is going to increase the 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 let's say the lenses that they use i think they are buying them from the german company's eyes uh, the lens is gonna need uh, even higher tolerances and so yeah it's a bigger machine um, it's gonna be uh, much more expensive roughly two times the cost the wa wafer output is uh, gladly like kind of increasing as time goes on and you can see i think this uh, this chart is fairly good from them so you can see like to the left 2015 the first version of the euv the pink one then as time goes on the throughput so wafers per hour goes up as well so you know the first one was at 100 100 wafers per hour and now the current generation nxe 3800e is around 200 wafers and the second generation in the purple color you can see that you know let's say the first first chips should enter the market late this year or the next year from intel so intel is going to be the first company to introduce high na euv the second generation one so yeah, and Intel, I think rumors are that they have purchased essentially the first four or five of those machines. And as a as today, the current capacity from ASML is roughly five to seven machines yearly. So this could also be part of, part of the reasons why I'm quite bullish on Intel because they have these machines and they're gonna have a head start compared to TSMC. But yeah, the cost goes up. Wafer throughput is roughly similar, but it's gonna go up uh, as time goes on. And then, yeah, you're going to be able to produce finer details. Then if you look at uh, last year, I just briefly mentioned that, you know, the EUV machines are much more expensive than the EUV. And in the Q1, they, they shipped 11 units. And then in terms of the company's revenue, well, essentially 35% of the revenue recently comes from EUV or maybe 40, 45% in some quarters. Another similar size is usually coming from the DUV. Then the applications, you know, some of the applications that server softwares that they are selling half a billion usually per quarter. But then the installation is quite a bit, you know, these machines are not, it's not like you're buying them on Amazon and then installing them tomorrow. Like they are shipped by airplanes and they are like huge. It takes months to ship them and then you have to tune them 
on the like nanometers and yeah it's hugely you know takes lots of time lots of manpower so yeah the logistics of it so it's i i think we're talking like half a year or months the minimum please enlighten me if you know more about this but i think it's at the minimum in the months so that's why they get 6.1 billion in revenue from that kind of installation service so if you now you know the company as i mentioned is uh, at 50 55 times price to earnings uh, ratio it's expensive but if there's one company on the planet that kind of should have high pe ratio i think it's this company because they have a monopoly on their technology and the entire freaking economy of the planet is depending on them so you could make an uh, argument that you know if nvidia or amd has p ratio of 46 these guys should have a p ratio of 100 because there's simply no other competitor out there now i don't think like you know it's a wise investment to do in a company with, with p ratio of 100 uh, if they don't show the insane growth and to be honest 2024 is gonna be roughly the same similar revenue that compared to last year but i think it's just temporary because the goal is to increase the production capacity to 90 traditional first generation EUV machines and then 20 UV, high NA second generation EUV machines by 2027. And if you combine this, I kind of stepped it up. So let's say if 20 machines are going to be able to produce 2027, the current capacity in 2024 is 5 to 7. I assume that in two years they're going to be able to make 10, 12 of these machines. And I assumed that the, the revenue is, uh, so in this case, like 2026, 90 EUV machines, first generation, times 200 million. Uh, that should give you around, let's see, 18 billion US dollar. And then 12 of the second generation machines times roughly 400 million, so 380 million. Takes, uh, gives you another 4.5, 4.6 billion. But as time goes on, you're gonna be s seeing even higher demand for the, you know, the high NA, you know, as Intel, TSMC, Samsung, all these companies and Micron and uh, everyone else is gonna be needing these machines to go further ahead, you know, in the two nanometer, one nanometer, uh, and in the Angstrom era, then you're gonna see increase of demand for this. But again, even the, this one, I think should increase because you know, if you're going to manufacture three nanometer, then which by, let's say, 2030 should be a legacy node the same way that, you know, 16 nanometer now is a legacy node. Uh, a lot of products in five, ten years are going to not be on the leading edge with three nanometer. But the only way to manufacture three nanometer right now is to actually use the, at the bare minimum, the first generation EUV machines from ASML. So I expect this demand to increase as well. And now, sure, some people would say, you know, is it realistic to assume 90 EUV machines for 2026? I don't know. I think the record is roughly 50, 55. I, I think it's doable, but let's change that to, I don't know, let's change that to 70. What did it give us? So if we go 70 for EUV and then we go 10 for the high NA one, it's still 18 billion of EUV revenue, which is essentially twice the size of the current EUV run rate they have right now. And uh, the, the important thing as well is that EUV has much higher margin than DUV. And high NA EUV logically should have at least higher margin than the first generation EUV. So I think like this is why the company as well in their earnings uh, kind of mentions that, you know, the long-term goal is to have 44 to 60 billion revenue and with 55, 56% uh, gross margin. So I do think like, you know, despite the company being, despite the company being like uh, quite expensive, this is one company that I think it's a good idea to at least have on your follow list. And if the price goes down, you know, if there's a trim of 10, 20, 25%, it's a really interesting case. So yeah, I, I think this is a good start. I'm gonna follow ASM uh, more closely and Please watch the sorry like the video and uh, subscribe if you liked it and see you in the next one